Hello everyone, in this video we will understand top 20 plus real time tools that every Java developer should know to develop, build, test and deploy our application in the real time environment. Alright, so please like this video and subscribe to our channel before getting started. Maven and Gradle, we are using them as build tools. They are used to automate project build process. Next one. Nexus and JFrog, we are using them as artifactory servers. They are used to maintain shared libraries for our projects in the company. Next, JUnit and Mocking, they are used to perform unit testing for our application. Whatever the code we have implemented, is that code working as expected or not? We are going to test by using JUnit with the mock objects. Once unit testing is completed, we need to perform code coverage. We need to generate the code coverage report to understand how many lines of code is covered in the unit testing and which lines are covered, which lines are not covered in the unit testing. We need to get the report. For that, we are going to use Jacoco. Jacoco is used to generate code coverage report for our project. By using this code coverage report, we can improve our unit testing scenarios in the code. Next one, Log4j. It is used to implement logging in the project. Logging is used to understand application execution behavior, application runtime behavior, any issues which occurred in the application, we can identify those issues by using log messages. To generate log messages of our application, we are going to use log4j and slf4j. Next one, log monitoring. Once the log messages are generated by the application in the log file, we need to monitor those log messages to understand the behavior of the application. For that, we are going to use several log monitoring tools, ELK, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. Those are three open source products. We can use them to monitor logs of the application. If you want to go for paid software to monitor the logs, Splunk is available, which is very famous and powerful software available in the market. These softwares are used to get the log messages of our application. Next one, SonarCube. SonarCube is called as code quality checking software. In our project, multiple developers will be involved in the coding process, right? Whatever the code done by the developers, we need to review that code and we need to identify developers' mistakes. Code quality checking we can do by using SonarCube. That will help us to identify the mistakes we have done in our code. Next one, Postman. Postman is used for API testing. We are going to develop backend application as microservices. Microservice nothing but a REST API. Once we complete our REST API development, we need to test the behavior of the REST API. If you send the data in the request, what response we are getting from the API. Okay, How the API functionality is working, we can test it by using Postman. Postman is called as API testing tool. And next one, JMeter. JMeter is used for application performance testing. We can check application stability and application average response time by creating virtual users using JMeter. JMeter is open source software given by Apache organization. If you want to go for paid software to do the performance testing, HP company provided Load Runner. In the real time, we are going to implement performance testing for the application to understand statistics of the application to understand bottleneck of the application. For example, if 100 users access our application at a time, what is the average response time? If 1000 users access our application, what is the average response time? So such kind of testing we can do by using JMeter. Next one, Docker. In the today's market, Docker is very, very, very important. Every developer, every DevOps engineer should know what is Docker. Docker is a containerization platform. It is used to execute our application as a container. What is the benefit we are going to get with the containers? When we run our application by using Docker containers, it will isolate our application dependencies from our machine. Whatever the softwares that are required to run the application, Docker will be taking care of that. You no need to install all the softwares required to run the application. And by using the Docker, we can make our application portable. We can run our application in any, any machine 
without bothering about the softwares which are required for that application execution, like Java, database, servers, and all. You no need to set up manually in every system. Docker will take care of that. Docker is called containerization software, which is used to run our application in the containers. And when we are running our application by using containers, we are going to use Kubernetes for orchestration purpose. Kubernetes is an open source software which is used to manage our Docker containers. When we are working with multiple containers in the application, right? Managing multiple containers will become difficult. If you take any microservice based application, for example, e-commerce e application, products page, products service will be available, order service will be available, payment service will be available, cancellation service will be available, report service will be available, admin service will be available. Managing all these services through containers, difficult. So that's why we need a tool which will manage all the containers, deployments, containers, scaling, containers, load balancing, all that stuff. That's where Kubernetes comes into picture. Kubernetes is called as orchestration platform, which is having a lot of demand in the market. Next one. In order to automate our application build and deployment process, we are using Jenkins. Jenkins is called as CI-CD software, nothing but continuous integration and continuous deployment. When the developers write the code and push the code to the GitHub, then we need to take that latest code, compile that code, test that code, package that code, create the Docker image, deploy the Docker image in the Kubernetes cluster. So all this build and deployment process, we can automate by using Jenkins. Jenkins is used for CI-CD. Continuous integration, continuous deployment. When there is a code change, all the build and deployment process should be executed automatically. That's where we are using Jenkins. Here, GitHub. GitHub and Bitbucket are called as version control softwares. In the project development, multiple team members will be involved. They will be working from different, different locations. All the developers to source code should be integrated at one place code integration. To perform that code integration, to maintain the source code of the project at one place, we are going to use source code repository softwares. GitHub and Bitbucket are called as source code repository softwares. By using this GitHub and Bitbucket, we can integrate project to source code at one place and we can monitor source code changes. As we are working in the team, Multiple people will be changing the code. They are adding the new code. They are modifying the existing code. They are removing some unwanted code. In this process, we need to understand who modified, when modified, why modified, what modified, where modified. That monitoring is very, very important because source code is everything in the project. So without source code, there is no project. So we need to be very careful when we are working with the source code of the project. That's why. This GitHub and Bitbucket repositories we are going to use to integrate the code and to monitor code changes happening in the project. And next one, Jira. Jira is called as project management software. The complete project related work we are going to manage by using Jira. Jira is a commercial software given by Atlassian company. This Bitbucket and Jira tools developed by same company that is Atlassian. Bitbucket and Jira are commercial softwares. We can use trial version and we can practice Bitbucket and Jira. Tomorrow when you join in the company, task assignment will happen through Jira only. Jira is used for project management as well as for bug reporting. So which team member should work on which task that will be assigned through Jira. Your lead or your manager or your scrum master will assign Jira tickets on your name based on that you need to do your work in the project, right? Then after Swagger, Swagger is called as documentation tool. When we develop backend REST API to expose our REST API information or to provide the documentation about the REST API, we are going to use a Swagger. Swagger for documentation purpose and the Swagger UI is available that is providing user interface to test our backend REST APIs. Along with this, in the real time, we are going to use Apache Kafka for message broker. If you want to send message from 
one application to another application for B2B. I want to exchange some data from one application to another application. Then we are going to use message brokers. Apache Kafka is one of the most famous message broker available in the market. And if you are dealing with some static data in your application, I don't want to fetch the same data again and again from the database. Then you can go for cache concept. Cache is used to improve performance of the application. By using cache, we can reduce number of DB calls between Java application and the database. So that's where we will use a Redis cache. Redis cache, we can implement in the project to load the static data. Apache Kafka, we are going to use to send the messages from one application to another application using Kafka as a mediator. Kafka is called message broker. Producer application will store the message in the Kafka topic. Subscriber application will subscribe to that message from the topic. So to send the data from one application to another application, instead of sending directly, we will use Kafka as a mediator. Kafka is called message broker. Redis cache, which is used to improve performance of the application by reducing number of DB calls. These all are the real-time tools, which are very, very, very important for every Java developer. So in this, Docker, Kubernetes, Maven, GitHub, Jenkins, these tools also called as DevOps tools. As a developer, you should know DevOps operations also. In the real time, a project development, testing, deployment will happen with the help of these tools. If you know just Java language, if you know just Java coding, that is not sufficient to survive in the real time project in the company. If you want to, Get the job and if you want to survive in the job, Java knowledge, Spring Boot, microservices knowledge, front-end development knowledge, and real-time tools knowledge is also required. So that is what we discussed in the last session about the tools and the purpose of each tool. Right. Every Java developer should know these concepts to get the job as well as to survive in the job. First, we need to focus on the back-end development as a Java developer because Java is a backend technology. So currently in the market, people are using Spring Boot and microservices to develop backend applications. Backend microservices will be available. And frontend development, we should learn for the front end, some projects using Angular, some projects using React, both are having good demand in the market. And DevOps tools, we should know how to work with Maven, Git, Sonar, Jenkins, Docker, Kubernetes to perform operations on the project. And we need to have knowledge on Linux operating system. The reason we are going to deploy our applications in the Linux machines only. That's why you need to have some knowledge on the Linux. And you should have knowledge on the cloud. Nowadays, everything is cloud computing. Companies are not interested to maintain their own infrastructure. Companies are looking for cloud infrastructure. As a developer, you should have knowledge on cloud as well. So that's why. In this course, we are going to learn backend development using boot and microservices. We are going to learn frontend development by using Angular. We are going to learn the DevOps tools. We are going to learn the Linux commands, and we are going to learn AWS cloud as well.